Hey guys and welcome to European Medics. In today's episode we will discuss the Lethal Diamond. Today's learning objectives are understanding the components of the Lethal Diamond, understanding the relationship between the factors of the Lethal Diamond, and also we will discuss some treatment options at the end. So as a short introduction for those who don't know, the Lethal Diamond is a concept in trauma physiology and it describes the relationship between the different factors in the body function during injury. So before we can jump right into the lethal diamond, we'll have to spend a few seconds talking about the cell working modes. The cell has basically two working modes, one is aerobic and one is anaerobic. In aerobic mode, there's a high O2 availability, high energy output and also a low CO2 output. This basically means that the cell has a lot of O2 available and can function very efficiently with a low CO2 output. In anaerobic mode, the cell does not have a lot of O2 available and it functions inefficiently while producing a lot of CO2. Okay, now that we covered the basics of the cell, let's jump into the lethal diamond. The components of the lethal diamond are hypothermia, which means low body temperature, acidosis means a low body pH, coagulopathy, which means the inability of the blood to clot properly, and hypocalcemia, which means a low blood calcium level. Okay, let's talk about hypothermia first. Hypothermia means we have low body temperature and it is caused by the lack of blood in the body. We have to remember that this is trauma specific, of course. The lack of blood in the body will cause a variety of things. First of all, O2 cannot be normally transported, which means that cells will go into an anaerobic working mode. That obviously will decrease the energy output of the cell as we discussed previously, and it will increase the CO2 output. Also, blood has the function to transport heat throughout the body, so if the blood cannot circulate properly, it cannot distribute the heat throughout the body. Also, it is very important to mention that blood will clot much less when it's cold. That means that cold blood will lead to increased bleeding because the blood cannot clot properly. This increased bleeding will lead to a couple of more factors, that is obviously more hypothermia, also coagulopathy and acidosis, which we will cover now. The next factor is acidosis, which means low body pH. The body pH drop is caused by anaerobic cell function, which means that the cell runs in the inefficient mode producing a lot of CO2 which is released in the blood. Since we have a problem with blood circulation, we cannot transport the CO2 away from the cell and into the lungs to be released via respiration. The CO2 will stay in the tissues and blood. CO2 is very acidic, that's why it causes acidosis. Blood will clot much less when it's acidic, that means that Acidosis will lead to coagulopathy, which we know is a clotting problem, that will lead to more bleeding. As we already described, coagulopathy is the inability of the blood to clot, and it's caused by hypothermia and acidosis. That means that low body temperature slows down and inhibits clotting, and low pH also inhibits clotting. Decreased clotting will obviously lead to more bleeding, which will further cause acidosis, hypothermia, and also hypocalcemia, which we will explain now. Hypocalcemia means low blood calcium levels and it is caused by bleeding and can be further worsened by blood transfusions and other blood products that are administered to the patient. The calcium in the blood will obviously be lost during bleeding. Calcium, however, is a very important clotting factor and the blood will obviously clot much less without calcium in it. That means that the lack of calcium in the body will obviously cause coagulopathy, which will cause further bleeding. So now we discussed all the aspects of the lethal diamond hyperthermia, acidosis, hypocalcemia, and ultimately coagulopathy, and how these factors influence each other. Okay, so now that we know what the problem is, how can we help treat patients that suffer traumatic injuries? Obviously, the first problem to fight is hypothermia, and we know we can prevent hypothermia by keeping our casualty warm and dry, and also increase the body core temperature by providing warm resuscitative fluids and heat pads. Hypothermia, by the way, is much easier to prevent than treat. That's why we would recommend an aggressive hypothermia prevention method early on in your treatment process. The second problem is acidosis, and we know acidosis gets worse with anaerobic working mode of the cell, which means that we want to keep the cell in aerobic working mode, in the efficient one. We can do that by sustaining circulation, sustaining respiration, and also providing oxygen for the cell. Coagulopathy, so the decrease of clotting, will obviously cause more bleeding and our priority should always be to stop the bleeding and keep the blood inside of the patient vessels, either externally through bandages and tourniquets and all the other good stuff, or internally by giving blood products and TXA to help the clotting internally. 
hypocalcemia, so decreased blood calcium can be easily treated by giving calcium gluconate or other forms of calcium just at the same time as we give blood transfusions to our patients. So that wraps up our video on the lethal diamond. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. This has been the first video we made on European medics. So please pardon any inconsistencies with the audio. Uh, we will work that out as we go. And yeah, thank you so much. Like and share. Uh, it really helps us grow a lot. And if you find anything that you want to comment on or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or DM me as you wish. Thanks so much. And until the next one.